Hello everyone, welcome to our video today titled Tips on Landing a Job as a Developer. My name is Cheryl, I'm a HR professional with several years working experience in corporate and consultancy. I work with individuals and businesses to help them find out how to best leverage their workforce. So, are you looking to start or level up your career in software development? Whether you're a beginner or changing careers or already in tech, here are actionable tips to help you stand out and land a job as a software developer, hopefully. From building a strong portfolio to leveraging network opportunities, this video covers everything you need to succeed. In this video, you'll learn how to build a strong portfolio, how to tailor, tailor your resume for each job, how to focus on in-demand skills, how to network with industry professionals, the benefits of contributing to open source projects, how to prepare for technical interviews, why and how to stay active in your continuous learning. So what do you need for building a strong portfolio? Showcase your relevant projects, okay? It's important that you demonstrate your skills to employers, okay? Web, these could be web or mobile applications that you're able to build, data analysis tools or game development. Host your projects online, on platforms like GitHub or personal websites to make your work easily accessible to recruiters. Okay, if you host your projects online, they're in one central place and they're just easier to access for anyone who would like to have a look at what it is you can do. All right, whether it's recruiters or potential um, uh, potential clients, document your code. Include readme files and documentation for your projects to make them easy to understand. All right, this is very important. If people cannot understand your work, there's nothing they can do with it. Tailor your resume for each job. As tedious as this may be, you know, um, you want that job. So it's important to go the extra mile to try and make yourself stand out. So for each job application, tailor it to that specific job application and ensure that the keywords on your resume, you know, the skills they're looking for match what's on the job advert. And that gives you a higher chance, um, likelihood of the, um, the ATS picking your resume. Okay. So you do this by highlighting key skills, focus on skills that match the job description whether it's JavaScript they're looking for, React, Python, or databases, ensure that you list this on your CV, on your resume. Quantify your achievements, okay? Include metrics where possible, be specific. If you improved a website loading time, by exactly what percentage did you include, uh, improve it, okay? Or developed a feature used by how many users, right? Keep it simple and clear. Avoid clutter and highlight your most relevant experience at the top. There's no point in putting, you know, I worked at, um, I worked at Java or I worked at Starbucks, you know, six years ago for a job you're applying for now. That's not relevant to this IT job, web development job you're applying for. So leave it out. Or put it way down at the bottom. Okay. Learn popular computer languages and frameworks, okay? Master languages such as JavaScript, Python, Java, C hash, C++, etc. And explore frameworks such as React, Angular, Django, or Spring, okay? Those that are relevant or um, relevant within the market at the moment, ensure that you master them. Understand the basics of DevOps. Okay, so familiarize yourself with tools like Docker, Kubernetes, CI, CD pipelines, as these are increasingly valuable to, to what employers are looking for at the moment. 
practice problem solving and algorithms. This is, I mean, as a web developer, you just need to be good at troubleshooting and all of this. So if you need to go onto platforms like Lead Code or HackerRank, do so. These will help you improve your coding problem solving skills. Okay. Network with industry professionals. All right. Um, these are people that can show you the ins, the outs, let you know what's relevant, let you know what's coming up. Um, they can be your mentors. They can be your support. Okay. So you can do this by joining developer communities. All right. So participating in forums like Stack Overflow, GitHub discussions, or Reddit programming communities. These help you stay connected to what's happening, what people are talking about, right? Attending tech meetups and conferences. These give you the opportunity to meet industry professionals at tech events and connect with them on LinkedIn. Now, once you're on LinkedIn, it's, imp it's important that you engage on LinkedIn. Okay, so share your projects, comment on industry topics and connect with recruiters and other developers on the platform all right so it's you know it's it's not good enough to just be on linkedin but interact react to posts make your own posts share your work so that you're more visible all right it's important to also contribute to open source okay so it's kind of like giving back so you find relevant projects contribute to build experience and connections in the in the tech community. This also puts your name out there. All right, um, showcase collaboration skills. Open source contributions highlight your ability to work with a team, which is attractive to employers because it shows how, how well you're able to do it and whether you're able to do it at all. Some people don't work very well in teams. So if a potential employer is looking for someone to join their team, they need to know that this person is able to work within the team, okay? Building a network. Many developers and recruiters keep an eye on open source communities, making it a great way to get noticed. So if you know this, then you know that recruiters keep an eye on open source, get in there, all right? Help to solve the problems, help to build yourself as a person, help to maintain those connections so that people can refer you as well as an, um, as an individual, as a developer, all right? How to prepare for technical interviews. Now, um, it may be daunting, challenging, but it's something that you have to do. So it's better that you prepare for it. So it's familiar by the time you're getting in there. Okay, so how do you get familiar with what potentially could be asked in the technical interview. Yeah, you can do this by one, practice coding challenges. Okay, so regularly solve code, coding problems on platforms like Cold Signal or Interview Cake to build confidence in your problem solving skills. Two, brush up on system design. For advanced roles, study basic system design principles and practice explaining them. Okay, um, so that this is so that when you do get into that interview, you're not fluffing, you're not mincing your words, you're being direct, you're being clear, and you're just confident with the, the content that you are explaining. Three, be ready for behavioral questions. Why? Because, you know, that they will come up. Show your problem-solving approach and how you work within teams by preparing for behavioral questions. These are questions like, tell me about a time you overcame a challenge, okay? Tell me about a time when you had to deal with someone difficult in the workplace. Yeah, explain to me, you know, what it is you like about working in a team, things like that, okay? So it's important that you're ready for those questions when they do come up and they're not something so alien to you, Okay. Staying active in continuous learning. Why? Because things are continuously changing and we have to keep learning. No matter which industry we're in, you must keep learning. Otherwise, all the stuff you know becomes somewhat obsolete, okay, and not really relevant or helpful to the present, current moment or situation. 
Okay, so you follow industry trends. You do this by reading blogs, watching tutorials, or joining webinars to keep up with the latest in tech. All right, number two, you can take advantage of courses or certifications, whether this is on cloud um, platforms such as AWS, Azure, or GCP. Yeah, um, cybersecurity or new programming frameworks can make you a more competitive candidate. Right, and isn't that what you're hoping to be? Yeah, you need to look more competitive, more noticeable. You need to stand out. So these are ways that you can do that. Taking those advanced courses, following the trends, making sure that you know what you're talking about. You know what's been happening in the industry. Right. Number three, experiment with side projects. Right. So you can create small projects to learn new skills, whether it's a new language, AI or mobile app development. Right, that's it for now, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Do stay subscribed for more.